around to the new AFL team in Tasmania. It was announced as a fait accompli, but since then there's been pushback at the cost of the stadium. Joining me live is Shadow Environment Minister Jonathan Dunningham and, of course, Taswegian. Thanks very much for your time. There's been a fair bit of order under the bridge since you had some strong things to say about this. Where, where do you sit in terms of support? If the team would not go ahead without this new stadium, would you be comfortable not backing it? Well, look, the deal's been done and the Commonwealth and the state have signed their agreement and, of course, getting a team, the Tassie Dream, was contingent on having the stadium. Yep, I made my views known. Uh, and I don't oppose a sta the stadium as a standalone project, but if any government is going to fund the nice-to-haves, they've got to fund the must-haves, and that was my key argument all the way along. If you're going to pay for a stadium out of that finite resource, taxpayers' money, then you've got to make sure you can cover everything else, be it health, education, roads, whatever it might be, we need to cover it off. But look, the deal's done. We've got the team. I'm not going to undermine uh, our deal to get the team, something this state deserves. But the one thing that does mm. worry me about this deal now is that money that's coming to Tasmania from the Labor government, $240 million. It's not in any way exempt from GST calculations, which means, in essence, if Jim Chalmers doesn't give us a guarantee that it won't impact on our um, GST allocation as a state, that effectively comes out of our health and education money. Uh, and so I've asked Labor federally, I know the state government have here too, whether they can quarantine that money from those calculations, but to date there's been silence. So it is a bit of a concern, but look, we've got the deal, we've got the team, let's stick to it. So just on that point then, because initially you had things to say around health spending in terms of the state money, your concern now is specifically around that. If this counts as allocation, distribution, and if it doesn't, so it's exempt if you like, then you're comfortable with where it sits. It won't be a sort of, um, you know, told you so in five years if the health system's struggling, you, you'll just say, look, I support it, let's move on. Well, as, as long as there is no direct cut somewhere else from the budget, be it in health or housing or roads funding, education support, that goes into the building of a stadium on Hobart's waterfront, then I think all is well. And I'll be watching that vigilantly. But the, the proposal as it stands today actually does take money out of health and education. So... Uh, the ball is squarely in Julie Collins' court, in Jim Chalmers' court, in the Prime Minister's court to make sure that that funding is exempt from those GST calculations. Right. We've seen it happen here before when we got $500 million for the Royal Hobart Hospital uh, and it came out of GST funding. Uh, Tassie doesn't need a dud deal. Could have been up to the Liberal Premier as well, to clarify that. Uh, two sides to this, but I do want to talk to you about something else so we can... You can take that as a comment if you'd like. Nuclear power, I know you and your party are pushing for this to be a part of Australia's energy mix going forward. Is there a caveat on that that it, it needs to stack up? Because most small modular reaction, reactors are still in um, development. A lot have already gone over in terms of cost overrun. So is it more open to it rather than locking it in as part of our mix? Well, we need to make sure that it does stack up. There's no point committing Australia to a specific course of action until we know it stacks up, and this is a long-term proposition. We also know that the community need to understand what this is all about, it's, and therefore we want to take them on the journey with us. Technology is evolving at a fast pace, and we're seeing other jurisdictions deploy these technologies as they are developed, and small modular reactors and micro-reactors too that can be used in certain settings. But... For the bigger nuclear technology, of course, you've got Gen 3 and Gen 4 and beyond being developed now and rolled out in other jurisdictions. So the technology is coming online. It's becoming more available, mm. less costly. And so we've got a mind to go down that pathway, but let's make sure it is okay. going to be cost effective. We believe it okay. will be, and that's why we're going this way. Uh, well, what about community sentiment? Would each community in some way get a say on being comfortable with whatever nuclear energy it is in their area, how would you sort of go about that process? Well, I mean, look, any government make, needs to make sure that uh, they understand what the community's concerns are and uh, if it is a case of trying to bring in something new, we need to allay those concerns and work with them. Um, so how we would roll out, where we would roll out, all of those things are yet to be worked through. But this is not about forcing anything on any community anywhere in Australia. But those who want cheap, clean, reliable energy, this is an option we want to have on the table. And that's a contrast between us and the government. They've ruled it out. We think it's it's worth pursuing and we'll work with communities who want to take it on as well.